So this video continues our series on simple linear regression. In this video, we're going to talk about fitting the model to uh, a sample of data and interpreting the model as appropriate to a given data set. So there's some general sentences that um, you all are going to have to learn, but I think it's helpful to see them first on a quick example. So we'll just jump into the example we're continuing with for the entire series on simple linear regression. And then in the end, I'll encourage you, uh, remind you to add an example to your course notes. So here we are in R, <laughs> where we have already loaded the library ggplot2. We've read in the data set Elmhurst, where we are attempting to explain gift aid, the numeric response variable, with the numeric explanatory variable, family income, by means of a line. And this line is essentially what we're going to figure out how to calculate first. And I call it fitting a model, which is why I always name the variable fit. So we're going to use the function ln, which we've used to make the plot. And it stands for linear, think line, model, because we're just fitting some sort of statistical model to two numeric uh, variables. So LM you've seen before for analysis of variance, and the syntax for it in this case is very similar. You always start with the response variable, which both for analysis of variance and simple linear regression is a numeric response variable. And then you put in a tilde. This character is found by holding shift and then pressing the one, uh, the key to the left of one. Hold shift and press the key to the left of one. And then you put in your explanatory variable, spelled correctly. <laughs> okay. And then as a final argument, you specify the data set that contains the variables you're going to use in this model. So this syntax here with the tilde in between the response and explanatory variables showed up exactly the same for analysis of variance. The only difference here between simple linear regression and analysis of variance is the type of the explanatory variable. Simple linear regression defines one numeric explanatory variable, whereas analysis of variance defines one categorical explanatory variable. So we'll run that code and then call summary on your fit. And you get a whole bunch of output. The pieces I'm going to start with are the estimates. So we got not only an estimate of the intercept, that is where this line crosses the y-axis when the x-axis is equal to zero, we got the estimate of the intercept to be 24.319. And we have an estimate of the slope across the explanatory variable family income. You can see the line points down, so it's got a negative slope. And you can see by the magnitude here that the slope is not that big. So these are the two numbers we're going to work on interpreting relative to this example. So let's start with the intercept. We will say when family income is zero dollars, we expect that gift aid will be 24.32. And then this is where the units are crucial. This is in thousands of dollars. So there's a few pieces to pay attention to here. When interpreting the intercept, it is always the case that the x-axis variable, the explanatory variable, is equal to zero. Family income here is also in thousands of dollars, so this is just zero dollars for family income. Then you're going to generally say we expect. We don't know for sure that gift aid will be exactly some number because, look, this family appeared to have zero dollars and they are not right on the line. 
And there could be theoretically other families here that also made zero dollars in income, but they don't fall directly on the line. This is a guess of what the mean amount of gift aid a family might receive. So we say we expect to emphasize the fact that we're not speaking towards one specific family. We are speaking towards the average of what all the theoretical families with zero dollars of income might expect to see, something close to what they should expect to see in terms of gift aid for attending Elmhurst College. So x-axis explanatory variable equal to zero, we expect, and then you start your sentence about the numeric response variable. The numeric response variable will be some number, whatever value you have you get R to calculate for you from the uh, actual data. And then don't forget your units. If you wanted to incorporate your units in another way, you totally could. You could just be like 24.32 times 1,000. And you could say, when family income is zero, we expect that gift aid will be $24,320. Notice I just did the multiplication between the intercept and the units of gift aid myself, because if I know it's in thousands of dollars, then I can just multiply it by a thousand and figure out how many actual dollars a family might receive. I am indifferent between these two, as long as they match in meaning. I don't care how you explain your units, but you should keep in mind that you are attempting to communicate clearly to your audience and or your reader. So you should use whatever units you think will make most sense to them and you. The other interpretation we're gonna focus on is the slope. So the slope is essentially um, how steep this line is. And because the slope is negative, we know the line is going to point down. So in this case, it will go like this. For every extra $1,000 of family income, we expect, for the same reason as before, that gift aid will decrease because of that negative. decrease by 0 0.04 thousands of dollars. And again, the units are sometimes annoying. I'm explaining this uh, as basically as I can because of the unit issues going on here. But again, if you want to reinterpret the sentence so that we're just speaking in plain dollars, that's totally fine. So you could say for every extra $1,000 of family income, we expect that, and if you need, here's your calculator again, gift aid will decrease by $40. I don't care which of these two interpretations you wanna use, you should use whichever makes most sense to you and your, fam and your audience, so long as you get the meaning of the slope correctly. So this is for every extra thousand dollars, we expect gift aid to go down by $40. For every extra thousand dollars, we expect gift aid to go down by $40. Okay, those are the interpretations I want you to focus on in the world of simple linear regression. They have a standard form. Now that we've seen a specific example, let's try a more general form of the sentence, as is our next topic in this presentation. Okay, so here was my note to myself. Remember, add to your course notes a quick example in R about simple linear regression. You should pick a different data set than Elmhurst. You should go through making your plot, fitting the model, and then interpreting the intercept and the slope in context of the data. So here we go, general sentences. For the intercept, 
the sentence is almost always going to look like this. When the explanatory variable is equal to zero units, we expect y to be, yeah, we don't need to be equal to again, to be some number. Oh, you know what number that should be? Intercept units, where intercept is whatever number you got from fitting the model to the data. So this is the general sentence for an intercept. When your explanatory variable is equal to zero and then fill in the units, we expect y to be whatever the estimated intercept is, whatever number you get rounded to two decimal places, units. That's the more general statement. And for the slope, we'll say for every extra one unit of the explanatory variable, we expect y to change by slope units. So we ex uh, for every extra one unit of the explanatory variable, whatever your explanatory variable might be, we expect y to change by slope, whatever you got from your estimated slope, units. The units are crucial here, and inserting whatever the slope and the intercept are from your fitted model are crucial. Hopefully between the quick example in R and these general sentences, you can kind of mad lib your way into uh, a new example that you should include in your course notes that helps you get an idea for how to fit data to the simple linear regression model and then how to interpret the intercept and the slope.